Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And today I thought I would do a video on the subject of inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Now I've been asked a lot of times by a lot of people to do um, a video on this subject. Uh, and a lot of these people are people who have had palpitations um, and when they've had their ECGs or their monitoring, all that has been found is that uh, their heart is beating fast, but their heart is beating with a normal rhythm. And um, very few people understand what inappropriate sinus tachycardia is. And truthfully, I didn't understand it, but because I was asked about it, I went and did some reading. And I do have a couple of patients who have inappropriate sinus tachycardia. So I thought I'd try and simplify things somewhat so that you could understand what, sinus, what inappropriate sinus tachycardia is. Um, to understand inappropriate sinus tachycardia, the first thing we have to do is to try and understand what appropriate sinus tachycardia is. So the first thing to say is uh, tachycardia, okay, tachycardia means fast heart rate. Uh, sinus means that the origin of that fast heart rate is the pacemaker that God gives to all of us when we are born. So we have a pacemaker and I liken that pacemaker to a man with a drum, all right? And the man sits there and he beats the drum and then the echo of that drum resonates and eventually when that echo dies down, the man beats the drum again. Uh, and so the normal rhythm in a human being should come from that man with, with the drum, i.e. the pacemaker. And generally the normal heart rate ranges between 60 and 100 beats per minute, all right? The average heart rate in a normal person should be around about 72 beats per minute. Now, so that is sinus rhythm, when um, the rhythm originates from the sinus node, i.e. the pacemaker. Tachycardia is when the man with the drum is beating the drum more than 100 times a minute. All right. Remember, normal is between 60 and 100. But if he's beating the drum more than 100 times a minute, then that is called sinus tachycardia. Now, the majority of times, sinus tachycardia happens because something is telling that man to beat the drum more frequently, i.e., there's something going on in the body which is telling this man, come on, beat the drum quicker, increase the heart rate because we need more blood, all right? So it could be because the person is anxious, for example. Anxiety uh, is uh, a release in adrenaline. The adrenaline prepares for your flight or fright response and therefore the heart rate is increased and that will cause sinus tachycardia. That is appropriate sinus tachycardia because something external is telling that man to go and beat the drum faster. Similarly, fever will do it as well. If you are feverish, then you need more blood to go around because you're dehydrated, the heart has to work harder, um, and therefore you will get a sinus tachycardia. Anemia is another reason which will cause a sinus tachycardia. These are all causes of appropriate sinus tachycardia. So with anemia, you have less blood, therefore the heart has to work harder to get the same amount of blood round. If you've got less blood, you have to do more with it. I pump more of it around. And therefore, um, your pacemaker will fire more and you will become tachycardic. Another cause for sinus appropriate sinus tachycardia would be your thyroid gland. You know, if you have a lot of thyroid uh, hormone in your body, excessive amounts, the thyroid gland will make the heart beat faster. Um, there are other things as well, like pheochromocytoma, etc. Now, inappropriate sinus tachycardia is when you don't have any of those conditions, and despite that, the heart is continuously beating at over 100 beats per minute. Now, <clears throat> the first thing to say is, um, 
for a lot of people, people used to think, well, that person is just anxious. Uh, but what we fa have found, and this syndrome was first described in 1939, uh, but what we have found is that in some people, despite all those things being excluded, the anxiety and the fever and all that, once they're all excluded, despite that, the heart rate is continuously above 100 beats per minute. Those people are people who may have inappropriate sinus tachycardia. But inappropriate sinus tachycardia is a diagnosis of exclusion. You cannot diagnose inappropriate sinus tachycardia without excluding the causes of appropriate sinus tachycardia. All right. And the majority of people who have sinus tachycardia have appropriate sinus tachycardia. But there is a minority of people who do have something called inappropriate sinus tachycardia, where the heart is beating above 100 beats per minute uh, for the majority of the time uh, with no obvious underlying cause. This is something that can be incredibly difficult to understand for clinicians and incredibly difficult to treat. It tends to affect mainly women in their 20s and 30s, okay? A lot of people will come and say, well, you know, after I was pregnant, I started getting palpitations. And then when you do an ECG, you find that their heart is going above 100 beats per minute. When you do a halter monitor, you find that their heart is continuously going over 100 beats per minute. It can slow down ever so slightly when they sleep, but even during sleep, the heart is beating faster than it should. Okay, that is inappropriate sinus tachycardia. What does it do to the patient? Well, it can be just a sensation of the heart beating fast, or it could cause all sorts of other symptoms, such as extreme tiredness, dizziness, chest pain, malaise, uh, palpitations, breathlessness. Um, remember that if the heart is going at, say, 120 beats per minute, you will feel like you're doing an activity to make your heart go out at 120 beats per minute. So you will feel those things that you would, for example, after a jog. Now, the problem with these patients is that although their heart rate is going at 100 or over 100 beats per minute, the minute they start doing anything, it goes up even further. So it goes up much higher. These people seem to be very sensitive to adrenaline and the heart rate can shoot up a lot more. And it can therefore become incredibly disabling because um, the patient may be just having mild palpitations whilst just lying there. But the minute they start doing any activity, their heart rate goes up so high um, that they feel breathless, they, they can't, they feel dizzy. And that can be extremely debilitating. It makes them very anxious. That precipitates the problem. Um, so it can be really, really difficult for some patients when they're afflicted with um, this thing called inappropriate sinus tachycardia. It's also worth noting that when we, for example, change posture, um, uh, our natural responses for our blood pressure, you know, because we're standing up, gravity will pull the blood in our bodies down. So our heart rate has to go up somewhat to try and compensate. Uh, and so the blood pressure... Uh, the, the heart rate does tend to go up slightly, but in patients with inappropriate sinus tachycardia, it goes up much higher. And therefore, um, they, that can, they can feel quite dizzy and just generally yucky when they adopt an upright posture. There are some people who have something called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is POTS. And it's important to differentiate between idiopathic or in a, sorry it's important to distinguish between inappropriate sinus tachycardia and POTS. In patients with postural orthostatic tachycardia the problem is not the tachycardia the problem is the blood pressure. The blood pressure tends to fall when they stand up and therefore the heart rate has to work much harder. Um, whereas in inappropriate sinus tachycardia what we think is the problem is that the pacemaker itself is problematic. The guy with the drum in his hand is dodgy. He's doing something he shouldn't. He is for no reason going ahead and beating the drum much quicker than he does, it needs to. That is what inappropriate sinus tachycardia is. Okay, The man with the drum himself is dodgy. Now, he may have different motivations, uh, and those motivations are the autonomic system, i.e. the vagus nerve, which has an intrinsic effect of slowing the heart, 
the sympathetic system, which has an intrinsic effect on speeding the heart. The, so the motivations of the guy with the drum um, uh, may be altered, i.e. you may have abnormal vagal um, uh, va um, abnormal vagal system so the, the vagus nerve naturally slows the heart down but if that is in some way dysfunctional then the heart rate won't slow down or you could have a hyperactive sympathetic system uh, or it may just be the guy with the drum himself uh, who is dodgy uh, so that is what is thought to be the cause of this inappropriate sinus tachycardia all right and so what do you do about it how do you go about treating it well the first thing to understand is for a lot of people there is this fear that if the heart is going so fast all the time then it could be damaged or are they doing some damage with the heart going this fast this has never really been shown to be a major problem in trials you know most patients who have this have an excellent prognosis there is really no evidence that if the heart's going that fast that you would develop a weakening of the heart. Um, and there is no evidence that treating this condition uh, prolongs life. So this condition does not shorten your lifespan and treatment of it has not been shown to prolong your lifespan. So you're not having treatment for it because you're worried about what it might do to your lifespan. You have treatment for it because of what it is doing in terms of symptoms, okay, and how it's making you feel. And there's a variety of different, um, uh, you know, levels of severity. Some people uh, have very minor symptoms. Other people have very disabling symptoms. Uh, and how do you treat it? Well, the first thing is, obviously, reassurance plays a big role. Number two, particularly in those people who struggle, especially when they change posture, it is a good idea to try and keep them really well hydrated. Because if you are very well hydrated, when you change posture, you won't drop your blood pressure so much because there's so much more volume inside you. So it's a good idea to increase your salt intake. It's a good idea to have fluid, lots of fluid. And it's a good idea to wear compression stockings in the legs so that everything is pushed up. And because it's pushed up, changing posture will not cause such a, uh, an exaggerated increase in your heart rate. All right? Uh, the difference, remember, between... Um, uh, inappropriate sinus tachycardia and postural orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome is that in patients with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, the heart rate is normal when they're lying down and it only shoots up when you stand up. Whereas in inappropriate sinus tachycardia, the heart rate is already fast when you're lying down and shoots up even more when you stand up. Um, so, um, so it's a good idea to be uh, well hydrated then remember some of these patients are very sensitive to even a little bit of adrenaline and therefore some medications like decongestants anything that contains a little bit of adrenaline if you avoid those then that helps um, then the next step is well what else can you do apart from that well there are medications traditionally they used to use beta blockers or calcium blockers to slow the heart down however now we have a new agent which is really much more effective called Ivabradin. And Ivabradin is purely a sinus node. Um, it slows the sinus node down, which is where we think the problem is. All right. So Ivabradin is an exceptionally good drug for this and has gone, um, has helped a lot of my patients in particular, uh, has helped my patients and a lot of other patients that I've heard of in particular. Um, then uh, the next question is, what else can you do apart from Ivabradin? Well, the third option is to be considered for an ablation. Okay, now the thing with an ablation is, the problem with an ablation is that you are going to be zapping the pacemaker because the majority of times we think that the pacemaker is a problem. You are equipped with a dodgy pacemaker which um, is just beating too fast. So you can, of course, zap him. The problem is that if you do too little, okay, if you don't do enough uh, of the ablation or enough zapping, then you don't get rid of the problem. But if you do too much, 
you risk damaging the pacemaker, which therefore then may end up necessitating an artificial pacemaker implant, which in a young person is not ideal because they then become dependent on that pacemaker. So what I'm trying to say is that an ablation should really be left as a last choice resort and should only really be done by someone who is very, very experienced in doing this. Otherwise, I would recommend lifestyle changes. I would recommend reassurance. I would recommend this Iva Braden uh, and uh, seeing how your symptoms go. Uh, but if your symptoms, despite that, are so disabling, uh, then I would certainly recommend that you see a very uh, experienced electrophysiologist who could then tell you what the chances of uh, a successful ablation would be. But th remember that the very problem is that you're trying to ablate the guy who's necessary to keep your heart beating. So, you know, you, you need the pacemaker to get the impulses down. Um, if you don't, if you, and if there is a part of him that's dodgy, how do you know you're hitting just that part? Uh, you can uh, hit too little, in which case the problem doesn't go away. You can hit too much, in which case you may end up with a pacemaker. But if, if you do hit too much and you are willing to have a pacemaker, then for a lot of people that sorts the problem out. If, on the other hand, you hit too little, then you may have to have another go through an ablation. But an electrophysiologist would tell you that. So that's a little bit about inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Um, I hope um, you found this useful. I hope it's answered some of the questions that I've been asked. Um, today's a really uh, big day. Uh, a member of the York Cardiology family has his birthday. So Arman, happy birthday to you. Um, um, and I wish you a really long and happy and successful life. And I also wanted to say hi to Marsha, who I met and who made me some amazing soup. So hi, Marsha. Uh, it was good to meet you. So here are my details. Um, I am Dr. Sanjay Gupta. I'm in York. Um, I have a website, yorkcardiology.co.uk. I have a Facebook page, yorkcardiology at gmail.com. And I have a secretary who is Jeanette on 01904725811. Uh, so if you um, want to get in touch with me, please feel free to ring Jeanette. Um, other than that, um, if you found this useful, then please do consider sharing it. It will mean a lot to me. It's quite nice to know that people are seeing what I have to say, uh, and um, it encourages, encourages me to keep going. So thank you so much, and all the best. Take care. Bye.